the winter season had arrived. This was one of the busiest times of the year for goods and services, and there was no doubt that the engines went to hand. Every day they went back and forth delivering Christmas merchandise to and from the yard. Some hated them, the work, but others thought it was worth it, as Christmas was a great time of the year. Ho, ho, ho! I'm back, my friends! We've got a huge night to go through, so... Rudolph, I need you to guide me when we leave. And you will stay here and look after the elves, honey. We'll be back later. Ho, ho, ho! Steve. Yes, Rudolph? Just because we come from the Santa Fe Railroad does not mean we are from the North Pole. And don't even call me Rudolph. I'm not red. If anybody should be Rudolph, it should be you. Oh, come on. It's Christmas Eve. We should be preparing for our Christmas traditions. Well, you do have a point there. Exactly. I've got a train to take soon. See you later. You're really giving in to him, George. I don't think that's how we should celebrate Christmas. Why? All it is is just transporting stuff that people don't really need to stores so companies can find easier ways to make money. Is this really what Christmas is all about? Of course it is. This is the best time of the year. We make a lot of money during these holidays. Are you falling into the greed trap? Christmas should be a time with family. Not about people racing to buy more pointless dresses. Shh, here comes the manager. I've received a new contract for a new shipment of Christmas supplies. It has to be taken to Springfield by tonight. Do either of you want to take it? I won't. I don't see the value in these kinds of jobs. Very well, Kitty. Just realize you're not going to get paid to sit in there. Uh, sir, you don't pay us very much in the first place. Well, what would you do with the money? What else? Upgrades! I'd rather not know what you mean by that. Anyway, you'll have to take the train, George. With pleasure. Yep, he did fall into the greed trap. George strictly followed the manager's orders and got to the train he was to take, which was still being arranged by Hank. Come on, Hank, load this up faster. This is important. I know that, George. It's just that I've got to be careful. We don't want ports and cargo to be damaged, do we? Has the line been cleared of any snow? Afraid not. We'll have to get Pete to assist you. Good luck. Fuck, that's all I need. Wake up, sleepyhead. Mm. Huh? Oh, hi, George. I need it. We don't wake you up for nothing. They were soon on their way, and Pete easily managed to fit most of the drifts along the route. Well, most of the drifts. They soon approached the valley, which had a huge snow bank from the bottom to the top. Oh dear, this ain't good. Even with my giant plow, I won't be able to tackle a drift that big. I'm gonna have to go back. Over my dead body, this is important. I've got an idea. Wait, what are you doing? If we go back a few feet, I might be able to charge it the drift, and the force might be able to push the snow away. No, oh, don't do that. That's not a good idea. Just no. Come on, we can do it. It. Ready? One, two, three. Rah! Ah, yeah. Well, he didn't think this one through. No kidding. Now we'll sit here until help arrives. However, they were in the middle of nowhere, and the form of communication wasn't for miles. It also began to get very cold. 
through this the last time I ever see her. Don't be like that. We'll get home eventually. You kidding? We're stuck. Lost. Possibly forgot. I wouldn't be surprised if we were here until the snow melts. However, they couldn't be forgotten forever. They had an important place, didn't they? Back at the yard, the manager had quite the call. What is the meaning of this? Mean of what? You promised you'd deliver this Christmas surprise. It's for several hours, and still we've got nothing. I demand a refund if you don't get it delivered. Hey, 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 now. Sell down, sell down. I'll figure it out. <sighs> What's with all this? Is everything alright, sir? Yes! Everything is just fine. Well, not everything. What's the matter? George has not delivered his train. Now I can't do that. Do you think you know what happened? Well, I reckon that he either got lost or stuck. At this weather, I think it's the latter. After all, he did seem too eager to think about safety earlier. <sighs> well, in that case, can you tell the others? We will have to form a search party. Of course. Eventually, the engines split up to make the search faster. George, where are you? I've got this nice car of fuel just as a gift for you. Wait, just the bit. Another mode of gravity. You have to remember this to find my friend. You will be on the naughty list for that one. Come on, I'll oh, you. We want to get some sleep. We don't need you crawling around at your free will. Whoa! Oh, it's you, Scott. I'm sorry. I've seen lots of cabooses. What are you doing all the way out here? Look no further than the blue bonnet's dim-witted ideas. He's stuck, so we're not going anywhere. You mean... George? Obviously so, Lumberjack. Please, call me Katie, not Lumberjack. Thanks anyway for helping me find him. Hmm? Well, I just sit here. Yeah. Katie moved the cars into a siding, and soon Steve came along with a work train. Workmen with shovels dug into the snow, clearing as much of it as possible, and Katie and Steve attached a cable to George. All right, George. At a count of three, we'll pull you free. Ready? I've always been ready. One, two, three! The combined horsepower soon pulled George and Pete free from the snowbank. Ha! Rudolph, it's you! And my sleigh, too! I know we've been through a big challenge when I see something like this. Steve, give George a break. He's already- Let it go, Katie. I'd prefer to be cleaned up. New arrangements had to be made. Steve took the train on a different route to his destination, and they put up a sign by the junction to warn of the train. Then Katie took George, Pete, and the works train back to the yard. You know something, Katie? I am incredibly grateful you came to rest with me. Well, it wasn't that hard, but you're welcome. No, seriously, I was there for an hour and I thought I would never wait to see you or any of the other engines again. Is there something on your way? Yes, you were right about what you said earlier. Christmas is not about all this marketing, money making, or any of that stuff. It's about spending time with those and learning and appreciating what wonderful life we have. I told you, bud. And you know what? We're grateful we found you, too. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without everyone here. Come on, let's get you home. When they returned, everyone cheered as George and Pete rolled into the yard. Three cheers for Katie for rescuing these two from being stranded in the snowdrift. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Hello everyone. I just got back from taking a passenger train. What did I miss? And nothing. Nothing at all. Not quite what George said. He got stuck in a snowdrift, and Katie and I had to look for him. Ho, ho, ho. This has been one eventful Christmas. You just had to tell him that, didn't you? I don't think it's so bad. Remember, even on Christmas, we like to share our stories. Now, I would like to get ready for tomorrow. <laughs> on Christmas Day, the shed was wonderfully decorated. There was a tree installed next to the tracks, a mistletoe on top of the tree. Ornaments, presents, everything was around the yard. The angels were amazed as to how beautiful it was, and all agreed that it was certainly the most beautiful day of the year.